Hello everyone, and welcome to Monster Hunter World, the latest gaming phenomenon that launched on PC last week. It's already the most successful Japanese game ever to hit the PC, and it's both visually impressive and entertaining. The PC version gets rid of the framerate cap and provides loads of settings to tweak, allowing you to play the game even on modest hardware. But for higher quality settings, you're going to need a pretty beastly rig. The latest generation consoles run the game at something approaching the PC's high quality setting, and even at 1080p you can't come close to a steady 60fps. Most modern graphics cards can break that barrier, but you'll also need a fairly potent CPU to get the job done. Older Core i5 and AMD FX series processors aren't likely to suffice, and the game scales well with both CPU cores and thread counts. But if you want to run at the highest quality settings and 60fps, you'll need a high-end graphics card like a Vega 56 or GTX 1070 Ti or better. The hardware for our performance analysis testing is provided by MSI, with the current generation MSI motherboards and graphics cards, plus a few older models included as reference points. The primary system uses an Intel i7-8700K Coffee Lake processor, and I've also tested with numerous AMD Ryzen and other Intel CPUs. I'm using the latest 398.82 drivers from NVIDIA and 18.8.1 for AMD cards. Both are listed as game ready for Monster Hunter World, though older NVIDIA drivers do tend to perform a bit better at the low to medium quality settings. I dig into the full list of settings in the PCGamer.com article, but there are 16 options to adjust with volume rendering quality, LOD bias, foliage sway, and SH diffuse quality having the largest impact on performance. For these tests, I'm using the low, high, and highest presets, but with resolution scaling set to high, meaning no scaling, for all resolutions. That means 1080p testing is really rendering at 1080p instead of upscaling a lower resolution, which is what happens on the Xbox One. I'm running a set path through the Ancient Forest, the first major area of the game and one of the more demanding locations so far. Weather and time of day can impact performance, so all testing is done with clear skies during the daylight hours to ensure consistency of benchmark results. Starting at the low preset, which is basically minimum quality on every setting that matters, most modern graphics cards and many previous generation GPUs managed to break 60fps. That's good to see, but again, this is as easy as it gets to run Monster Hunter World. The game still looks good, but the environment and AI calculations require a lot of work, and budget graphics cards like the GTX 1050 and RX 560 come up short. You can boost performance by up to 50% if you set resolution scaling to low, but you're basically just lowering the resolution. Speaking of lowering the resolution, I also tested Intel's HD Graphics 630 and AMD's Ryzen 5 2400G processor with Vega 11 graphics at 1080p, but they're not really cut out for that sort of work, at least not in this game. Dropping to 720p gives a 75-85% to boost to frame rates, and Monster Hunter is mostly playable on the Intel graphics chip at that point. I also tested with resolution scaling, which allows Intel to break 30fps averages and gets the Vega 11 up to nearly 60fps. Be warned, however, that resolution scaling combined with a 720p resolutions ends up looking quite blocky. Overall, every GPU tested is able to run Monster Hunter World acceptably, and even 20 to 30 FPS is playable if you're not too picky. Nvidia's top GPUs have a CPU or driver limitation of around 125 FPS right now, even with an overclocked i7-8700K running at 5 GHz, while AMD's cards are able to reach 140 FPS. The mid and high presets perform nearly the same, within about 5% at most, so I've skipped full testing of the 1080p mid preset. At 1080p high, most graphics cards take about a 40% hit to performance relative to the low preset. The GTX 1050 and 1050 Ti still beat AMD's RX 560, but at most other levels AMD's GPUs have a slight lead, with the RX 574GB edging past the 1063GB as an example. The same applies to the 588GB versus the 1066GB and the Vega 64 and 56 versus the GTX 1080 and 1070. The bad news for anyone looking to get a steady 60fps is that you'll really need at least a GTX 1070 to get there, or a heavily overclocked 1066GB or RX 580 should suffice. Pay attention to the minimum frame rates and you'll see that the mid-range GPUs all dip below 60fps on a regular basis. 144Hz refresh rates are basically not happening, unless future patches improve the situation, so G-Sync or FreeSync monitors are your best option if you want even higher frame rates. Moving up to the highest quality preset doesn't really improve visuals that much. 
The high preset is generally a better option because mid-range GPUs like the 1060 and RX 570 and 580 fall well short of 60 FPS. AMD's Vega 56 holds a significant lead over the 1070, while the RX 580 has a smaller lead over the 1060. The biggest hit is from the volumetric effects, so consider turning those down a notch or two if you want maximum quality while maintaining a high frame rate. Only three of the graphics cards tested managed to break 60 FPS averages, and two of those still dip well below that mark on occasion. That will likely change once Nvidia rolls out the next generation of graphics cards, which are expected to launch later this month, but right now, only the GTX 1080 Ti or a Titan graphics card will suffice. 1440p brings even the 1080 Ti down to the 60fps range with frequent dips below that mark. The high preset is again a better option if you want to run out 1440p as it will boost frame rates by 40-50%. That can help the Vega 56 and above break 60fps, but for the highest preset shown here, running with a 30fps cap to smooth out gameplay might be the better option. AMD's Vega cards continue to lead their Nvidia competition, though it's worth pointing out that the GTX 1080 currently costs about as much as the Vega 56, and the Vega cards use substantially more power. I measured 500 watts for the PC while running the Vega 64, which is 100 watts more than even the GTX 1080 Ti. Somewhat surprisingly, VRAM doesn't appear to have a major impact on performance yet. The 2GB and 3GB cards remain theoretically viable, though they mostly lack the processing power necessary for 1440p. You can more than double performance by dropping to the low preset, incidentally, so if you prefer resolution over quality, a lot of the GPUs can still easily break 30fps at 1440p. As usual, 4K at maximum quality is still a bit of a pipe dream, and with SLI and Crossfire not officially working with Monster Hunter World, you'll need to drop the quality if you want to hit 60fps. The GTX 1080 Ti only barely breaks 30 FPS, and everything else comes up well below that mark. While 30 FPS is technically playable in Monster Hunter on the PC, I should also note that mouse input lag starts to show up if you fall below about 40 FPS. It's not unbearable, but it's definitely noticeable. For 60 FPS, the low quality preset more than doubles performance, meaning the 1080, Vega 64, and 1080 Ti can all break 60 FPS. The GTX 970 and above can also break 30 FPS at 4K low as well. It's worth pointing out that GPUs with less than 4GB VRAM are effectively useless at 4K and the highest preset, with frame rates dropping down to 1 to 2 FPS. The GTX 1063 GB is a literal slideshow. For CPU testing, I've used the GTX 1080 Ti on all the processors to show the maximum difference in performance you're likely to see from the various CPUs. Running with a slower GPU will reduce the performance gap. At the highest preset, things still start getting compressed, so I've opted for the high preset here. Monster Hunter World is happy to make use of additional cores and threads, and clock speed is a lesser factor. The result is that AMD's Ryzen 7 2700X is effectively tied with the Core i7-8700K, and the Ryzen 5 2600X outpaces the Core i5-8400. Interestingly, the Ryzen 3 2200G also places just ahead of the Core i3-8100, so this engine appears to be particularly well optimized for AMD's Zen architecture. Flipping through the various quality presets and resolutions, AMD's CPUs do great at the low to high presets and 1080p, but the highest preset, regardless of resolution, favors Intel's processors. Practically speaking, you'll want a CPU with at least 4 cores and 8 threads, or 6 cores and 6 threads if you want optimal performance with a high-end graphics card. Older generation CPUs, meanwhile, may struggle to hit 60fps, even at minimum quality. On the notebook side of things, even though the graphics cards have relatively similar performance to their desktop counterparts, CPU bottlenecks definitely come into play. This is especially true as the notebooks are limited to 1080p in most cases. Things are more reasonable at the highest preset, but now all the tested notebooks struggle to hit 60fps. The high preset, or alternatively a mix of low to high settings, will get all three notebooks into smooth 60fps territory. Looking at the other performance results, 1080p low really highlights the CPU bottleneck. The GE63VR and GS63VR both have the same i7-7700HQ processor, with nearly identical results at 1080p low. Newer gaming notebooks have 6-core processors, and clock speed matters as well, but once we're at the high preset, things make more sense. 60fps at maxed out quality might be a stretch on most notebooks, but all three mobile GPUs can easily handle Monster Hunter World. Once again, thanks to MSI, who provided PC Gamer with the hardware and sponsorship for these performance analysis articles. 
I've used MSI's Z370 Gaming Pro Carbon AC motherboard with the Intel CPUs and the X470 Gaming M7 AC motherboard for the Ryzen processors. Both systems use 16GB of DDR4 3200CL14 memory with the game loaded from SSD storage in all cases. Monster Hunter World is proving to be incredibly popular on PC, and provided you set your expectations appropriately, it can run on everything from Intel integrated graphics up to the fastest graphics cards available. But if you're looking for maximum performance, perhaps in hopes of taking advantage of a 144Hz display, G-Sync and FreeSync are your best allies. They'll allow your system to spit out frames at anywhere from 40 to 144 frames per second without tearing. That's important because getting above 100 FPS will require both a fast CPU as well as a potent graphics card and probably dropping several settings down a few notches, because Monster Hunter World also requires a monster of a rig to run at maximum quality and smooth frame rates. Like the hunters in the game, you may need to upgrade your gear before you take on the burliest monsters. As always, thanks for watching.